channel welcome to another little green workshops video tutorial this time we're making kefili and kefili is a very special cheese one of my favorites there it is there don't worry about the mold that's just how it's supposed to be right we need eight liters of milk we need an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture quarter of a teaspoon of calcium chloride that's been diluted half a teaspoon of liquid rennet or 2.5 mils that's diluted as well and some salt so first of all we sterilize all of our equipment I've just got about three inches of water in the bottom of the pan on boiling that. I've also got a sushi mat there that's just for resting the cheese later on. So we've got our curd cutter, we've got our, uh, our knife to cut the curd, we've got our stirring spoon and a whisk if I need it. Also sterilizes the thermometer as well. So we've laid all our ingredients out, ready to go. So we've got our calcium chloride, we've got our liquid rennet, and we've got our mesophilic culture there. For this video I'm just using normal store-bought milk. And I've sanitised all of the pressing equipment, so the mould, the follower, the spring, and the press. So that's just air drying on the side. All nice and clean. It's essential when you're making cheese that everything has been sanitized before you start. There you go, I've measured everything out and I've uh, measured out the rennet and the calcium chloride and I've laid out my tools. So we're ready to start. So before we start, um, that's the double boiler setup I've got there. You can see that I've got a small pot that's uh, just a little bit smaller than the stock pot that I normally use. And that's got a little bit of water in it and that controls the temperature for me. There's the colander and it's uh, with a cheesecloth that was boiling before in the main stock pot. So the first thing we do is we bring our milk up to temperature. It's 32 degrees Celsius. So I've heated that up beforehand. And the first thing we add is in the calcium chloride solution, and that adds a bit of soluble calcium in, so we can set a good curd using normal pasteurized and homogenized milk. So just pour that in there and then give it a good stir. So once that's stirred in, then we add in the mesophilic culture. It's only a small amount. This is direct set culture. And the type I'm using here is MO30 from Sacco. Okay, let me give it a stir. Make sure that's all stirred thoroughly. And then we leave it to rest for 30 minutes. Now, I've just sped this up. So 30 minutes have elapsed and I'm putting it back on the pot to bring it back up to temperature which is 32 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to add the rennet now, once I've just checked that it is at 32. And that looks right. So before we add the rennet, we'll make sure we're stirring the milk all the time. just testing the temperature with my finger there there we go there's the liquid rennet diluted in 60 mils of non-chlorinated water so you can use filtered tap water just got to make sure it's got no chlorine in it because it affects the rennet enzyme uh, which won't be able to do its work so we give it a, a stir for less than a minute so we don't stir it so we just make sure it's all mixed all the way through we don't stir any more than a minute So 
So once that's stirred in, then we're going to cover it with the lid, just make sure nothing gets in there, no dust or anything. And we're going to leave that for 40 minutes. So 40 minutes later, the curd is set. We're going to give it a quick test. With clean hands, I've sprayed them with white vinegar. Put your finger in and you lift up. And if the milk splits like that, then you've got what's known as a clean break. So we have a clean break there. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the curd. So I've just got a flat knife, nice and simple. I'm going to cut it uh, horizontally and vertically. But first I'll just do a cross hatch. Now I've sped this up a little bit now. So you just go one way in a straight line. Now these cuts we're trying to get six millimeter cubes so that's about quarter of an inch for those who still look imperial we're trying to keep them as uniform as possible it's very hard to do the diagonal cuts you just go in it as a 45 degree angle on both sides then you just give it a stir and if there's any large lumps in there you can cut those with the spoon that's no big deal Now, as we stir it, we're going to be bringing this up to 33 degrees Celsius. And this should happen over a period of about 10 minutes. So we're doing very slow temperature increase with this cheese. You can see there, still stirring. This is just the initial stir, still cutting those big lumps. So you need to stir all the time or the curds will mat down the bottom. Now after 10 minutes, it looks a little bit like this. We're at 33 degrees Celsius now. And we can turn the heat off now because the milk will retain its heat. We may need to turn it on and off as we stir. Now we're going to stir now for 40 minutes. And we're going to frequently stir the curds to make sure that they do not mat. You can see there, that's after 40 minutes of stirring nice small grains they're about four mils now more four millimeter i wouldn't say they're cubes just pieces and then we let it rest for five minutes on the stove and then we pour it through our cheesecloth so i've just sped this up a little bit here as well so i've retained the way i've put a pot underneath this so i can keep the way it's always handy stuff to make nice yummy ricotta out of. There we go, got all the curds out. So we'll let that rest for five minutes, as you can see there. It's drained away a fair bit. Now we're going to do a little bit of cheddaring, what's called cheddaring. You can see that's dropped a couple of inches. It's a nice firm curd now. So we're going to cut it with a sharp knife. I'll just make sure you clean your hands with vinegar. That was a reminder to myself. So I use a curd knife and we're just going to cut it into slabs. So the slabs are about an inch thick. So that's uh, 2.5 centimetres. Just make sure we don't press through too much. So I've got that on a draining board, as you can see over there. So they're cut into 2.5 centimetre slabs. And we're going to stack those on top of each other. And we're going to turn those top to bottom twice in 10 minutes so this helps uh, drain a bit more whey out of the curd just got to make sure you do this all on a clean surface as you can see, I'm just flipping the slabs there. Okay, so I've done the cheddaring. I've done it twice in 10 minutes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the second cut. Because when you do the first cheddaring, it knits together, so. Just move those slabs again. I've already done the ones on the board. I 
So once they're all done, they bind again into another big bunch. Now we're going to mill the curds. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut, we're going to break the curds up with your thumb and finger into about thumbnail size pieces. So as you can see, all thumbnail size pieces here. And then we're just going to add our salt. So I've got the two tablespoons of salt. I'm just going to pour that all over the top. And then I'm going to mill that in. It's a lot of salt for this recipe because it's a very, very salty cheese. So just mix all that up. Now we're going to make things nice and simple. We're going to use the same cheesecloth I've been using there for draining and milling. And I'm going to bung that straight into the mould. So, so easy this. As you can see, no way is dripping out. Most of it's drained off at the moment. But we do need to press it to form the shape of the cheese. So just pop that into the mould. It does need a little bit of coaxing. It goes in eventually. So I've managed to get it all in there without too much fuss and too much mess. So all we have to do now is we put the cheesecloth, the side of the cheesecloth just over the top. And what I'm doing there is just stretching, make sure there's no loose cheesecloth. I want a nice clean cheese without any, uh, without any ripples in it from the cheesecloth. So I have my follower there. Now you wouldn't, you don't put it on top of the cheese. You have to put it over the top, put a cheesecloth over the top like that. Put your follower on top. Otherwise, the follower, the cheese comes up out of the side of the follower, and it's a bit of a cheese volcano when you press it. So these nice simple presses, you can see there. So we've got the follower on top. We just unscrew it a bit. We're going to put the spring underneath. The spring's just an indicator to tell us how much pressure. When that's fully closed. It's applying 50 pounds or about 22 kilos of pressure. There's not much room there, so I have to squeeze it down a bit already. So we're going to press this at 5 kilos or 10 pounds. Now it's just a guesstimate with a spring. Just don't you don't fully close it up, just close it down a little bit. At this stage you don't want to press too hard because if you start getting a milky liquid that means you're starting to lose some of the proteins. So sometimes you can't avoid that but uh, yeah just lightly pressed around this first round. We're just trying to form the cheese up at the moment. Okay so the next pressing we'll just take this out. I'll speed it up a bit. Okay so we're going to pull it out and we're going to flip it over. Before we do that, we cover it in salt, top and bottom. This is essential to make a the, the crust or the rind of the kefili. So just a little bit of table salt, top and bottom. And then we're going to press it again at 5 kilos again for 10 minutes. And then we're going to repeat it two more times. We're going to repeat the process, press it 7.5 kilos for 20 minutes and then we're going to do it again at seven with the salting and all that another 7.5 kilos or 15 pounds for 16 hours so 16 liters elapsed this is the next day and we take it out and we put it onto our cheese board and mat 
that is dry. I'm going to air dry it now for about three to four days. This is essential. So once it's air dried, then we pop it into the cheese fridge at 13 degrees Celsius at 80 to 85% humidity for three weeks. And we turn it several times a week. There's no need to wax this cheese because your form's a yellow rind. It's very wonderful. Tastes fantastic. Might get a little bit of mold on it. If that's the case, just use a cheesecloth dipped in some brine and wipe off the cheese and that'll get rid of any mold growth. So once it's aged, you can eat it straight away or you can backpack and store it in the fridge. Uh, I normally cut a wheel in half and backpack the other half and wrap the other half in, in, uh, in baking paper. Very simple. Or grease proof, grease proof paper. Just uh, stops the cheese from sweating and it stops it from drying out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Don't forget you can pick up hard cheese making kits where you can make this cheese over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.